Hi, it's Li Xinzhen from Microsoft Research Asia. In this talk, I'll present our work, Sparta, Deep Learning Model Sparsity via TensorFlow Sparsity Attribute. We know that uh, deep learning models have achieved impressive success in various scenarios, and the computation power is a key factor in catalyzing the success of deep learning. In recent years, the model size has grown rapidly and the growth of the DNN model size significantly outpaces the growth of the modern accelerators. Fortunately, many algorithm works show that the sparsity commonly exists in the DNN models. For example, there can be more than 80% of zeros in the VGG model without losing accuracy. Leveraging such sparsity in the model can achieve orders of magnitude potential of computation and memory saving. Deep learning model sparsity is an active studied research topic, and various algorithm research works propose lots of different methods to sparsify DNN models, uh, including the unstructured and structured pruning, single precision quantization, mixed precision quantization across different layers, and even mixed precision quantization within the tensor. However, with so many advanced sparse patterns, why do we still see the very limited gain in practice? Here, we find three obstacles to the sparsity optimization in practice. The first obstacle is the miss of the proxy matrix. The learning curve of the high-performance kernel optimization is quite steep for the machine learning researchers. Therefore, the common practice of the machine learning researchers is applying a mask tensor on the original weight tensor to simulate the pruning behavior and use a proxy matrix, for example, FLOPs, to evaluate their compression algorithms. However, such proxy metrics do not translate into the real performance benefits directly and may lead to inaccurate results. For example, 50% sparse, sparsity ratio in the fine-grained sparsity pattern can reduce FLOPs by 50%, but it does not reduce latency by 50%. Besides, the default general sparse kernel uh, often leads to suboptimal performance and cannot reflect the real potential speed up of the target sparsity pattern. The second obstacle is the diminishing end to end returns. Previous research works mainly focus on how to optimize the performance of a single operator while losing the optimization opportunities at a graph level. We find that the effect of the sparsity is not limited to the current operator, and the values in the nearby tensors may also become sparse, affected by other sparse tensors. We call this sparsity propagation. Take the picture as an example. As we can see, some values of W2 are pruned by the compression algorithm at the beginning. If we just replace the current metamol operator with a sparse metamol, then only the second matrix multiplication can become faster. And the right figure shows the propagated sparsity attribute affected by the initial sparsity attribute. As we can see, after the sparsity propagation, the sparsity ratio of the entire model becomes much higher, as the nearby operators can also be faster due to the propagated sparsity. So, ignoring the graph level optimization will diminish the end-to-end -end returns. The third obstacle is that there is no mature end-to-end -end solution that integrates various optimizations systematically, and different models with different sparsity patterns have to be optimized case by case. More importantly, some complex sparsity patterns may require a combination of different sparse optimizations to achieve better performance. And the current sparse optimizations for individual operators or sparsity patterns are isolated. Individual solutions are hard to be extended or combined with other techniques. All the problems we mentioned above motivate Sparta. In Sparta, we take the sparse tensor as a first class citizen in DNN compiler. 
Sparta makes the following three key design decisions. First, we propose Tensa as the core abstraction of Sparta, which allows a specification of arbitrary sparsity pattern. Second, with the initial tensor from the compression algorithm, Sparta will propagate tensor across the whole DNA model so that Sparta can expose the full potential sparsity in an end to end manner. Finally, tensor also enables sparsity aware execution plan transformation and code specialization to generate high quality codes given any sparsity pattern. At the core of Sparta, is a tensor with sparsity attribute abstraction. Here, we call it tensor for short. Tensor augments the standard tensor with an additional sparsity attribute tensor that has the same shape with the original tensor. Each element in the sparsity attribute tensor represents the corresponding sparsity attribute. The figure shows an example of the tensor. With tensor, user can express arbitrary sparsity pattern and the compiler, being aware of the sparsity pattern, is able to perform sparsity aware optimizations. To provide real speed up for various sparsity pattern and models, we propose an end to end sparsity optimization system called Sparta. This figure summarizes the overall architecture of Sparta. Given the initial sparsity attributes from the compression algorithms, Sparta first performs attribute propagation to expose all potential sparsity in the model. Second, to better leverage the propagated sparsity in the model, Sparta will transform the execution plan accordingly to better take advantage of the propagated sparsity. Specifically, Sparta transforms the original sparse pattern into one or several sparse patterns that are easy to be optimized. Finally, Sparta performs the sparsity aware code specialization and generates highly efficient sparse kernel for each operator. The awareness of tensor sparsity enables Sparta to achieve better performance compared with the default general sparse libraries. As we mentioned in previous page, the propagation can find more potential sparsity in the model which reveals the graph level opportunity. Performing such propagation somehow is quite complex because for each operator, the propagation may have multiple directions and different operators may have different propagation behaviors. For example, as shown in the figure, with the same initial sparsity for the MADMOL and the RELU operator, they have totally different propagated sparsity attributes. Therefore, to support different propagation behaviors, Sparta provides a clear interface to register or expand the propagation rules for the customized operators. But the writing propagation rule for each operator is somehow burdensome. So Sparta also provides tensor algebra and tensor scrambling to generate propagation rules automatically. The tensor algebra infers the propagation rules based on the calculation logic of the operator. And the tensor scrambling takes the operator as a black box and infers the sparsity attribute by using lots of random inputs. Please refer to the paper for more details. After the sparsity propagation, the new sparsity pattern in the model may be complex and hard to be optimized. To better leverage sparsity, Sparta will transform the target sparse pattern into one or several patterns that are easy to be optimized. For example, take the metric multiplication with the given sparsity in the picture as an example. Sparta will transform the given sparse pattern into a 2 by 2 block sparse pattern and a very sparse fat green pattern. In this way, we can combine the block sparse kernel optimization and the fat green sparse kernel optimization to better leverage sparsity and achieve better performance. Therefore, 
transformation can find the best kind of kernel optimization or the combinations of the kernel optimization for the target sparsity pattern. After the transformation, each sparse pattern is simple and easy to be optimized. Sparta will further specialize the highly efficient kernel code according to the sparse pattern for each operator. In Sparta, we have two levels of code specialization. First is the kernel level specialization. The model sparsity actually means the data computation in the model. So we can perform the code specialization accordingly by eliminating the data computation in the model. Take the following figure as an example. According to the sparsity pattern in the figure, six sum matrix calculation are data computation and can be eliminated. Sparta will hard code the sparse pattern into a code and eliminate the data computation accordingly. Besides, the instruction level specialization will replace the computation with the hardware instructions if possible. For example, we can replace the innermost loop with the low bit WMMA instruction in the quantization sparse kernel. With the design highlights in the previous page, Sparta can support various models and sparse patterns. And instead of an operator centric view, Sparta exposes four graph level optimization opportunities during the sparsity optimization. More importantly, Sparta can integrate different sparse optimizations systematically to achieve better performance on the complex sparsity pattern. Finally, Sparta also allows machine learning researchers to evaluate their sparsity ideas in the real implementation instead of the proxy metrics. In the following pages, we will evaluate Sparta against these four points. First, we will evaluate Sparta on popular sparse patterns and models. This experiment shows the end-to-end -end latency of the three models under different sparse patterns. As we can see from the results, Sparta achieves a significant speed up over the six state-of-the-art dense and sparse baselines. Then, this experiment shows the end-to-end -end opportunity discovered by the sparsity propagation. Specifically, we prune all the layers in the mobile net to three target sparsity ratios, including 15%, 17%, and 19%. This figure shows the sparsity ratio of each layer after the sparsity propagation. As we can see from the results, the sparsity ratio increased significantly after the sparsity propagation especially for the structured sparsity pattern. For example, the total sparsity ratio of the structured sparsity is increased from 50% to the 89% after the sparsity propagation. We also evaluate the end-to-end -end performance of Sparta under the mixed sparsity pattern. The right figure shows an example of the mixed sparsity pattern which comprises of the quantized block sparse pattern and the float fine grain sparse pattern. As we can see from the figure, Sparta outperforms all the baselines significantly because Sparta can better leverage the sparsity by transforming the mixed pattern into several simpler ones. In addition, as far as we know, Sparta is the first work that can optimize such complex sparsity patterns. Finally, we also show how Sparta boosts the algorithm performance by providing real latency as a feedback to the pruning algorithm. The figure shows the models searched by the algorithm based on the flops and the latency, respectively. As we can see from the figure, the best sparse models found by the two methods have similar accuracy. However, the model found via flops does not meet the latency requirements. The models found based on the flops are 24% and 51% higher than the latency requirements, respectively.
In conclusion, we treat Sparsity as the first-class citizen in DNA frameworks to facilitate efficient training and inference of the sparse models. We propose an end-to-end -end sparsity optimization system called Sparta that can integrate existing various sparsity optimization systematically and provide real end-to-end -to -end speed up for different sparsity patterns and different models. Sparta also reveals new opportunities for sparsity at a graph level. We are actively developing Sparta. The code will be released in the future. Thanks. That's all.